feel great. I'm ready to go. I got, I think that uh, God had a plan for this whole thing. We're going to be meeting with the Pope. We're going to have a chance to minister to a lot of people in Italy. And I even want to do some painting in the Vatican, so this should be a good time. There's something amazing about Rome. They say all roads lead to Rome. I mean, you look out at the history of this beautiful city 
Why is Rome so strategic for touching the world for Christ? Well, you know, there are different uh, reasons for it. One is a prophetic one. It looks like in the last days something's going to happen. And uh, historically we can see how more and more the Europe is becoming the center of the action in Rome. It is the classical, classical capital of Europe, yes. and um, so I really see that. Uh, and with this jubilee, oh, this jubilee, my gosh. where I think the Catholic Church is calling millions of pilgrims coming over, and there is a spiritual awareness, people that want to be reconciled, this uh, strife for unity, of reconciliation, and love, and of course we all know that this can happen only through Jesus Christ. I mean, he is the Prince of Peace. Yes. So it's a wonderful opportunity. I think because of all these reasons, Rome is at the center of what God is doing in God's economy in the world today. Well, you mentioned the Pope. We met with him today. Right. And, uh, you know, he's, he's getting old. His health is failing. Do you think that the legacy of the current Pope will be that we see ongoing a sense of reconciliation and reaching out in love. Do you think the Catholic Church here in Rome can continue to reach out to the evangelicals? Well, that is a big question, of course. You know, who, who knows the future? I mean, all I know is that we need to uh, uh, focus more and more on Jesus Christ and less on the institution. And the institution uh, as a Catholic Church or as an evangelical church could be a big hindrance, couldn't it? Yes. And we are strong believers that we need to love God with all of our hearts right. and serve and love our neighbors. Right. We need to know God. He'll take care of making himself known through our service and reconciliation to the others. And, you know, through doing this, I mean, can you believe that the Lord has been opening right. so many doors? Even what happened with us uh, this morning, you know, with the Pope and the right. piazza with thousands of people. Yes. And uh, right. people just coming to us and recognizing us and uh, the parliamentarians and the senators. I mean, all these are doors that God is opening because we don't want to, quote unquote, proselytize and point our fingers on people. Right. We just want to serve and love them and share about Christ. That's and right. something wonderful happens, they'll open up to you. That's right. You know, I love that verse in Revelation, let's say, Revelation 3, where it says, I am the one that opens the doors. Mm -hmm. And the door that I will open, nobody will shut. You know what I discovered, Tom? I was the most, uh, I mean, the number one uh, uh, door broker in yeah. the world. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't break any door. Right. I will open all kinds of doors. But the question is, did God open the door? That's true. I know that our relationship and what happened today, you That's, know, and this, yeah. uh, and this reconciliation, and this evangelizing, serving, and loving others is indeed a door that God has opened. And of course, it's kind of scary, but you know what? Nobody can shut it. Well, when God opens it, it's so obvious. You just see things fitting together. Case in point, we were on our way today uh, to meet with the Pope, and you had heard that we couldn't even present a painting to him. Exactly. And yet, last minute miracle, God was able to open the door where we were able to bring the painting and share it with uh, Pope John Paul II. Now that, that was a great chance to see unity because what I presented was a symbol. It was not a painting, it was really a symbol of love between myself as an evangelical and him with the Roman Catholic tradition. Now, I've been in Europe enough to know that Europe is an area that is deeply in need of Christ. We believe that Rome is the springboard to reaching Europe. Don't you agree? I agree, and God has been doing this over and over again, even the meeting this afternoon with, uh, uh, with Hans. You know, oh, yes. to you know, this important man that whose life was changed oh, yes. just because he was loved so much, you know, by God, and who says that it's, you know, people go to sleep in church, but there's one thing that keeps people awake in church, and that is music and the art, the right. painting. Right. I mean, even this, and the way he was sharing with us about his personal relationship with Jesus, I mean, that is beautiful. And I think that Rome can really be the beginning of, uh, even of a revival in your own ministry, you know, let alone my own ministry. Well, that's, I know that you need that, but yes. I'm saying, you know, the world still needs to be changed, and the biggest temptation for us is just be happy and content with what we have, right. you know? But God wants to reach other people. You know that verse in the New Testament where, where Jesus said, there are other sheep, they're not right. of this pasture, right. them I must reach too. Yes. And I think that's what God is trying to, to do in our lives. When we, when we talk about uh, Italy for Christ, are you seeing a receptiveness in people's hearts 
to to find a personal Jesus, not Jesus of the traditions, mm -hmm. but to find personal Jesus. Yeah, and that's what we're showing. The Jubilee has helped us incredibly in this. Really? You know, like like you know, an hour ago you just heard all those uh, senators and parliamentarians, you know, talking to you and saying, you know, God has been bringing our lives together. Our our faith has been revived. So it's only for Christ. I mean, we want to bring Christ to the people. It's not just a matter of religion or church. Right. You know, Maria, you know, said to me, uh, Maria, is, of course, is the vice president of the lower chamber. Says, Guy, you remember where two or three, she was recalling a yes. Bible study, where two or three are gathering my name, I'm in their midst. You know, we are a church right now, aren't we? I mean, that was, that was incredibly Isn't that good. Wonderful. I mean, that was wonderful. That Powerful. was wonderful. And uh, so God is changing the people that in turn can change uh, the masses. Yes. And uh, I think that's what God uh, wants to do right now. And your selfishness in allowing uh, you to serve in reaching the world through arts. And I, you know, it, it doesn't have to be Italy, it can be Europe, it can be Africa. But just the fact that you are seeing yourself as uh, a minister of the gospel, that's just right. like Leonardo, right. just like here in Rome, like Raffaello, Michelangelo. Right. right. They couldn't preach. They couldn't yeah. sing. Yeah. But boy, they could share and proclaim the name of Jesus through their art. Right. But that's what you are doing right now. Wow. And to me, that's wonderful. Well, art is a universal language. We have found that when you do a painting and you share it with people, whatever their faith or background, it becomes something that reaches out and touches their heart. The ambassador to Jordan. Yes. Who knows his background, his faith, if he has a faith, maybe he has no particular faith whatsoever. Different nationality, different ethnic background. He was intrigued by the paintings. Yes. He wanted that work of art in his home. Now, if you would have handed him a scripture tract, he may not have wanted that. Mm -hmm. If you would have handed him a gospel music tape, he may not have wanted that. But a painting can be a tool God can use mm -hmm. to reach into people who otherwise would not be touched by the gospel. That's right. And of course, you know, your, your symbol of the fish in John 3.16 yes. does give <clears throat> also uh, yeah, the, the word of God out. Yes. And that word will never come back void. Boy, that's really wonderful. I, I'm looking you know, forward to the future with a lot of excitement of what God wants to do. Amen. And we'll never be satisfied if we're going to be just being here, just talking and, uh, and uh, conversing together just for the fun of it. Or for you just to see the Pope, for the fun of seeing the Pope. We're going to be satisfied when we really see people's lives changed. Right. Because of the relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's, that's what we want to do. Well, that's why we're here. And uh, we really believe in our ministry that our relationship with Italy for Christ, our relationship with evangelism in Rome as is beginning to grow, and our relationship with Europe, with mm -hmm. all the scenes that I paint that relate to this continent, mm -hmm. that relate to the European mindset, that relate to the values of Europe. This is a, a chance to reach out in new ways for the gospel. And uh, that's why we do it. Thank you so much, Tom. Love yeah, you, God buddy. bless you, Tom. God bless you. God bless you, guys.